Good health to all from Rexall. From New York, it's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, welcoming you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You know us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company, each one scientifically compounded to do a job for you. Take Rexall's famous mouthwash, MI-31, as an example. MI-31 is the name of a special antiseptic formula that kills contacted germs in a matter of seconds when used full strength, yet will not harm delicate membranes of the mouth and throat. Uncompromising quality like this is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. This is the first time the Harris family has been to New York in years. And as we look in, we find them standing by the window of their suite high in the New Yorker Hotel. Phil is pointing out the famous landmarks to Alice and the children. Gee, Daddy, New York is an exciting place. Yeah, it sure is, Phyllis. As a matter of fact, it's the biggest city in the country. Next to Doo-Wah Diddy. (laughs) Now, look, children, I want to show you some more interesting landmarks and... uh, Incidentally, Alice, I want you to pay attention, too. Oh, now, look, Phil, you don't have to tell me about New York. I was born here and lived here until I was 18. I know that, I know that. But a lot of new things have been built since then, like the Woolworth Building, the Brooklyn Bridge. (laughs) Now, now, those places were built long before I was born. If you say so. (laughs) Now then, kids, do you see that low dome on Riverside Drive there? That's the tomb of the greatest general the world has ever known. Robert E. Lee. That's Grant's tomb. Quiet, you Yankee. (laughs) Phil, maybe I'd better take it. No, wait a minute. No, you don't. No, you don't. I don't want my little southern daughters misinformed. All right. I'll do it your way. Chillin', just looky down there, you little rebels, (laughs) y'all. Thank you, Cottonmouth Fay. <laughs> Do y'all see that statue of the woman in the harbor there with the arm held aloft? Who is she, Mammy? <laughs> Barbara Fritchie. Don't overdo it. That's the Statue of Liberty, kids. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. But you can put that torch down, baby. I'm a married man now. <laughs> but look, if there's anything else you kids want me to point out, just go ahead and name it. I know this town like a book. What's that tall building over there? That tall building? Oh, you mean the tallest one? Oh, that's, uh... That's, uh... I'll give you a hint, Phil. It begins with the letter E. Oh, of course. That's the Eiffel Tower, kid. <laughs> Used to be the tallest structure in the world. Until they built the Empire State Building in London. (laughs) Alice, I don't need your help. I know that. Daddy, if we're good, will you take us to the Bronx Zoo? The what? The Bronx Zoo. Oh, sure. I'm anxious to see one of them Bronxes myself. (laughs) Besides that, we'll be able to see the lions, the tigers, and the anteaters. What does an anteater look like? Oh, an anteater? Oh, that's a funny-looking animal. It's got a long snout, and it's always poking around, and it looks like... Good uh... morning, Philip. (laughs) Thank you very much, Willie. Now you can go back in your cage. (laughs) Uncle Willie, Daddy's going to take us to the zoo. Not only that, I'm going to explain all the different animals to him, Willie. 
Oh, Philip, haven't you done enough to confuse their little minds already? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm trying to educate my children. I want them to know as much as I do. That they knew two years ago. <laughs> Philip, you'd better let me take the children to the zoo. I know more about animals than you do. You do not. I know every animal there is there. You do, hmm? If you're so smart, what's a new? I beg your pardon? I said, what's a new? Nothing much, a boss, so what's a new with you? <laughs> oh, you dove, you, Philip. Did you hear that? That's a pretty funny gag, ain't it? I mean, just offhand like... Oh, Father, how could you? Philip, that's the kind of a joke that would appeal only to a child. As a child, I'd like to contradict you. <laughs> Maybe you don't like my sense of humor, Willie, but most people do. That's how I became successful. <laughs> Phil has a point there, Willie. Of course I have. How do you think I became as famous as I am today? You married Alice? Uh, Willie has a point there All right, all right, all right (laughs) You're all just jealous of me because I'm a celebrity Because people are always crowding around me And they're... Uh Uh-oh Hey, that must be the newspaper men They've come to interview me Yes, sir, I had it all arranged by my social secretary, Mr. Remley Frankie arranged it? Sure, I gave him 500 bucks to throw a big party last night at the Stark Club, just for the press. Well, if it was your party, why didn't you go? Well, Frankie thought it'd be hammy if I showed up. He... <laughs> you know, he said he could rave about me more if I wasn't there. Uh-oh, now, kids, look. Kids, you better hide in the bedroom so you won't get trampled. Willie, you open the door and act like a butler, and Alice... I know. I'll tie a rag around my head and pretend I'm a chambermaid. I never thought of that. (laughs) Now, some of the older reporters might recognize you. (laughs) Now, look, honey, they're here to see me, but I'll try to get you in one of the pictures. Gee, would you? Yeah. All right, Willie. All right, Willie, open up that door. Let him in. Hey, Alice, look. There's all the important columnists are here. There's Winchell, Ed Sullivan, Jack Gould, Val Adams, Nick Kenny, John Crosby... And hey, there's Earl Wilson. Gee, if I'd have known he was coming, I'd have worn my sweater. (laughs) Say, Phil, you'd better greet them. Yeah, I will. Gentlemen, quiet, please, gentlemen. Quiet. Quiet, if you will. I'm a busy man, and I don't have much time. Ask your questions. Take your pictures uh, systematically, and uh, I'll try not to show any partiality. Hey, Steve, who's the curly-headed jerk with the red eyes? I don't know. Probably a deadbeat relative of Miss Faye's. All right, gentlemen, I'm all ready. Step aside, bud, so we can talk to Miss Faye. We'd like some pictures, Miss Faye. We'd like a story from you, too. Oh, I'll be very happy to oblige you, fellas. Me, too. Uh, we'd like a little resume of your life story. Well, well I was know, born I was in Nashville, born in and York, I was one of eight boys. I, I had all my schooling there, and when I was in grammar whatever. school at the age of 23, my pappy hey. took me hey. and my seven brothers west. Hey! Pappy always said... Hey, be all plenty. (laughs) What do you think you're doing? I'm telling the story of my life. Go in the other room and write it down. (laughs) I haven't got a pencil and paper. Write it on the wall in blood. We'll copy it later. (laughs) Now, Miss Faye, may we take a picture now? Oh, certainly. And, And, fellas, do me a favor. Take it from over here. My left side is my best. I look good from any side. <laughs> How about a little cheesecake? Would you mind showing us your leg? A little higher? Just a little higher? Higher, please? I can't. I got my pants leg up to my hip now. <laughs> Will you be quiet, Miss Faye? May we see a little leg, please? Well, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd rather not. What's the matter, Miss Faye? Bashful? No, bow-legged, but I'm not. <laughs> Miss Faye, tell this bellhop to get lost. Bellhop? Here, son, take this five bucks and go down and get a bottle and some setups. You can't tell me to go down and get a... A bottle? (laughs) I'm on my way. I can have a picture taken any (laughs) time. Miss Faye, I always listen to your program, and I enjoy it very much, especially the songs. 
I like the hero. Well, which one? How about row, 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 old master painter? That's what I like about the South. Lucky old son, the general and his horse. They... Bye, bye, baby. Remember, you're my baby. When they give you the eye, and just to show that I care, I will write and declare that I'm on the loose. But I'll stay on the square. I'll be lonely, but even though I'm lonely, there'll be no other guy. Though I'll be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling with my baby by and by. Write and declare that though I'm the loose, you are still on the square. I'll be lonely, but send that rainbow to me, then my shadows will fly. Though I'll be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling with my baby. Master Painter, or Apply the Fundamental, or Chattanooga Shoeshine Boy, or The Preacher and the Bear, or... Why don't you shut up? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, thanks for the interview and the pictures, Miss Faye. We've got to run a Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? wait a minute. Say, didn't, uh, didn't you guys go to a nice party at the, uh, Stork Club last night? Oh, sure, and we had a swell time, too. Who do you think your host was? Oh, some Texas oil man named Frank Remley. <laughs> he told you he was a Texas oil man? Oh, not only Texas. He's got wells in Oklahoma, California, <laughs> and Saudi Arabia. Well, thanks again, Miss Faye. So long, Sarah. How do you like that, Remley? He takes the credit for throwing the party, he spends my money, and you get all the publicity. I can't help it, darling, if the newspaper men prefer to interview me. <laughs> Such is the penalty of being a cinema queen whose every action is of great import to the reading public. <laughs> get a load of this wampus baby star. <laughs> Wait till I see that Frankie. He's got oil wells, huh? I'm going to take him apart. Hi, I'm Curly. Well, if it ain't the high-octane Remley. <laughs> How are things in sordid Arabia? <laughs> Did the newspaper men enjoy my party last night? Yeah, that was better than I expected. Here's a bill from the Stork Club for $250 more. <laughs> you pay it when your next gusher comes in, Glenn. <laughs> Look, Frankie. Hmm? Tell me about that big oil man who was at the uh, Stork Club last night. Oil man? Yeah. Oh, I heard some lush there bragging about the oil wells he owned all over the world. I don't know who said it. You were the one who said it. Oh, that's where I heard it. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I know the voice sounded familiar. Frankie, this is the worst thing you've ever done to Phil, and you ought to be a Alice, yourself, please, really. Alice, please, please, don't shout at me. My nerves are all frayed. <laughs> It's a hectic night I spent on Curly's behalf. I'm ruining my health for this boy. What do you mean? This morning when I got up, I could see the bags under my eyes without looking in the mirror. <laughs> Remley, let me ask you once more, why do you do these things to me? You were supposed to get me publicity. Curly, I tried. I went to every columnist in town and asked them to mention your name. They all refused. Refuse why? They all said they wrote for family newspapers and they couldn't use dirty words like Phil Harris. 
What's dirty about Phil Harris? Such a clean-sounding name. Remley, you told me you were going to get me good publicity when we got to New York. Now, why haven't you? Nobody knows you here. This is a tough town to crack. You've got to do something sensational. Sensational? Like what? Well, let me think. Hey, I got it. All you've got to do is imitate one of the greatest publicity stunts ever pulled in history. Do what Lady Godiva did. <laughs> Frankie, don't be silly. I couldn't swim the English Channel. It's a better answer than I expected. Curly, Lady Godiva rode through town on a white horse. Naked. Where are we going to find a naked white horse? Look, we got to think of something that nobody's ever done before. I realize that, but what? I don't think anybody's ever walked to Europe yet. <laughs> well, that's about as much as I can listen to. So long, fellas. I'm going inside and call a brain surgeon. I think I've got a double header for him. <laughs> Ignore her, Curly. We'll think of something. Yeah, we'll think of something. But remember now, I want it to be dignified. Hey, is anybody home or from the groceries? <laughs> All the way from California? Huh? I'm so used to saying that, I forgot. What are you two mental midgets up to now? We're trying to figure something sensational for Mr. Harris to do so he can get publicity. Yeah, but it's got to be dignified. Can you think of something, Julius? Let's see. Sensational and yet dignified. I got it! Why don't you jump off the top of the Woolworth building? What's dignified about that? Wear a tuxedo. Hey, I like that, Curly. <laughs> Especially the tuxedo part. In case anything happens, you're all ready to be laid out. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen because I ain't going to do it. Mr. Abruzio, you're right. But the way I got it figured out, nothing can happen to you. You and Mr. Remley go up to the top of the Woolworth building, Mr. Remley pushes you off, and I'll be down in the street to break your fall. How are you going to break my fall? I'll catch you in a paper bag. What's the matter with you guys, anyway? Catch me in a paper bag. Want me to walk to Europe. It's a wonder you don't want me to do a jackknife off the Brooklyn Bridge. Curly, that's it. What's it? Jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. Look at Steve Brody. Fifty years ago, he jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge, and people still talk about him. If you make that jump, your name will live. And if you're lucky, you might, too. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Come here, Curly. I'll explain this to you. You don't really jump. I get up on top. I push a dummy off. You're waiting down below, and as soon as the dummy sinks in the water, you jump in, splash around, I pull you out, and you're a big man. <laughs> big man, huh? Sure. Yeah, I see what you mean. But look, Frankie, the newspaper men ain't going to fall for this unless we get a lifelike dummy to push over. Mm -hmm. Now, where can we get a lifelike dummy... <laughs> Julius, I want you to do me a favor. Whatever do you have in mind, Mr. Harris? <laughs> Don't you know? Yeah, but I want to see if you got the guts to ask me. <laughs> now, look, Julius, you're my pal. All you got to do is to let us push you off the bridge, and it'll get me a lot of publicity. My name will be on every front page in the country. Well, the least you can do is to help a friend. Would you jump off a bridge for me? Of course I would. Go ahead. <laughs> Julius, friends have to help each other without, without thinking of themselves. I guess you're right, Mr. Harris. I'm being selfish. 
After all, since time immemorial, friends have sacrificed themselves for each other. They've given their lives so their pals might live on. Then you'll do it? Are you kidding? <laughs> Never mind, we'll get another dummy. <laughs> hey, but, Julius, you can help us. Sure, as long as I get paid for my service. All right, all right, so I'll pay you later. Look, Julius, your job is to push the dummy off the bridge. Flash a light so we know you dropped it, and we'll be down below to take care of the rest. And look, Frankie, you call the newspapers and tell them to be at that bridge at exactly 11 o'clock. Okay. Come on, Julius, you can get down and get the dummy. Wait a minute, I didn't get paid yet. Mr. Harris, how about... Services. Let me know when they'll be held, and I'll be very happy to attend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, this will make Alice's publicity look sick. When this story breaks, I'll be famous the world over. Oh, Curly, sometimes you even kill me, you dove, you. <laughs> Sing to me, will you, my pet? Sing it out. <laughs> The painter from the faraway hills Painted the violets and the daffodils He put the purple in the twilight haze Tended a rainbow for the rainy days Painted up the mules on the blue summer skies Painted the devil in my darling's eyes Captured a dreamer with a thousand thrills The old master painter from the faraway hills Then came his masterpiece and when he was through He smiled down from heaven and he gave to you What a beautiful job on that wonderful day The old master painter from the hills far away Summer sky painted that devil in my darling's eyes, captured a dreamer with a thousand thrills. The old master painter from the faraway hills. Then came his masterpiece, and when he was through, he smiled down from heaven and he gave me you what a beautiful job on that wonderful day. The old master painter from the hills, far away, far away. you see the publicity you get on this. Well, the time's getting close. Don't forget, as soon as you see Julia's signal, jump off this dock into the river. Frankie, I've been sitting here medicating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, kidding. That, that river looks awful cold. Couldn't I jump in someplace else? Where? How about the heated pool at the Y? <laughs> Curly, stop stalling. That's almost time. The newspaper guys will be here any minute, so get ready. You only got 30 now, seconds. Now, wait a minute, Remley. While I'm out there floundering around in that water, what are you going to be doing? I'll get in the boat, row out, and pull you in. What boat? I knew I forgot something. <laughs> but don't worry. I'll rent one later. All right, Curly, there's 25 seconds to go. But you haven't got the boat. 20 seconds. Thank you. 15 seconds. Oh, Bill. thank you. Bill, where are you? Oh, here comes old Kill. Hey, that's Alice. I'm over here, honey. 
Superman called and told me about your crazy plan. Phil, don't you dare jump in that water. There's the signal, Curly. Go ahead and jump. Don't you do it, Phil. Don't listen to her. Let's listen to her. She might have a point. Keep talking, lady. <laughs> Hey, Curly, the dummy just went in. You've got to go in now. But, Remley, I don't. Frankie, you push me. Oh. Phil Harris, come out of there. You've got to come out of there. Why? You don't know how to swim. Oh, now she tells me. Help, help. Oh, oh no. Now I'll have to go in and get him. Oh. <laughs> What happened? Where am I? Back in the hotel room. Ooh. Remember you jumped in the East River? Oh, yeah. Hey, tell me quick. Is it in the newspapers? <laughs> Is it? You're mentioned on the front page of every paper in town. Oh, good. Then it was, it was worth it. Hey, read it to me, Frankie. <laughs> okay, here you go. Alice Faye, famous screen star, saves unidentified man. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. One of the most frequent questions I'm asked about Plenamins, Rexall's popular multivitamin capsules, is this. How are Rexall scientists able to guarantee that two Plenamin capsules a day give you more than your minimum daily requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established, plus valuable liver concentrate and iron? Well, they probably have some accurate way of measuring them. You're right, my friend. Accurate and ingenious. Take, for instance, the spectrophotometer, which is used to determine the potency of vitamin A. What did you call it? Spectrophotometer. It's used to measure se selected wavelengths of light. But what has light to do with vitamin A? Well, pure vitamin A will completely block the ultraviolet rays in a beam of light. So when Rexall's men of science want to measure the amount or potency of vitamin A in a plenamin's capsule... They place a solution of its contents in the spectrophotometer. Then ultraviolet rays are directed at this sample. And the amount which the sample will filter out or block is an accurate measurement of the vitamin A contained in the cap capsule. You know, I'm beginning to understand what you family druggists are talking about when you tell us... You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall? Well, it's more than a slogan. It's a fact. Good health to all from Rexall. Folks, this is Phil Harris again. The Rexall Drug Company and our entire cast extend congratulations to the Boy Scouts of America who are celebrating their 40th anniversary this week. Forty years of vital national service and character-building activity. This great youth organization is in the midst of its fundraising campaign. So be a good scout and give generously to the Boy Scouts. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were John Gibson, Laura Stockfield, and Jack Alderson. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Next week, we broadcast again from New York. If you're tormented by a cough these winter days, try Cherisote, Rexall's famous cough remedy. Ruby red, pleasant-tasting Cherisote goes after coughs in two ways. First, it soothes the raw and irritated membranes of your throat and bronchial tubes. Second, it helps loosen your cough. Remember, it's a good idea to see your doctor about a cough that hangs on. Ask for Cherisote at the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product 